these are the meat chickens. They are now, what is it? It's Christmas Day. I got them on November 2nd. So their time's coming to an end. Not just yet. Give them a couple weeks or so and we'll be there. Uh, yeah, they have grown fast. The only problem that I will do different next year with these is I will raise them to be butchered in uh, September, October time frame, something like that. Because it is so, it's also a really bad year this year, but it's so cold outside, I can't keep them outdoors. So they have been in the coop, which, uh, you know, meat chickens, all they do is eat and poop, and they poop a lot. So it's a daily routine to refresh their bedding, and then every few days get the bedding out and restart, and that's a lot of work. So I would rather they fertilize the pasture in the tractor than be cooped up like that. So there's Jimmy scalding his first chicken. It's a big one. Now the temperature was at about 160, so it's a little too hot. So we're just gonna swish it around a little bit, make sure that the feathers and the skin on the feet come off. And once it does, we're gonna transfer it to the chicken plucker. And he lost his first chick. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Those there suck, I don't know where I put the other ones. Um, I put them somewhere and I don't remember. Okay, I think they're good. Okay, that one's dirty. Looks good. But that may not come off. That's okay, I can boil the feet later. Okay. Let's go ahead and try the chicken plucker. Okay. So here's our chicken plucker. We're gonna turn it on before we put the chicken in. And off we go. I think that one's even too big for the damn plucker. <laughs> that one was so big, we can get it through the uh, cone. trimming the feet off. This one's a little over scalded, but that's okay. Jimmy don't like the skin anyway. <laughs> right here. Bend it the other way. No, the other way. There you go. And you'll see where the two bones bend it all the way over. There you go. Now just make a little slit and you'll see a crack. And bend it more. And cut a little more. Bend it more. Cut it more. There. Now you should see it separate. Yep. And it should be just really easy. Going. Just keep going. There you go. And now if you want to cut it from underneath, you can. Or if you want to just cut it from the top through, you can too. Just watch your fingers. And okay. one leg. And we're putting the legs oh, in here. We're going to re-boil them to make sure all of the gunk is off before we make stock. Either way, you can do it from the back or from the front. But once you find that joint... That's a therapy in me. What? Palpate. Oh I yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, by the way, it's Jimmy's an anatomy a therapist. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's how I figure out where the knee joint is. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's one good way. Now we can always add cold water to that um, scalder since I think it went up to 160 something on this one, as you can see. But um, there you go. Look at that. Two that feet. Okay? Awesome. Okay. So here we have our little pile of feet, and then we have the gizzards, the liver, and the heart, and the neck, and okay. the tip of the wings for stock. So then... Yeah, you just pull pull it a little, make a little slit in there with the knife. So just kind of cut oh, the you already have it open. Oh, you can mesentery? just pull it out. Yeah, you can just pull it out, the esophagus and the windpipe, and if you see the crop, you can pull the crop out too. So I'm trying crop to should be it. empty. It's usually right underneath the breast, somewhere in there. Breast. Sometimes it's right at the top, but it's empty so it's hard to feel because they haven't eaten in a day. Uh -huh. As long as you loosen it around the neck, you can also pull it out from the bottom. Since the crop is empty, it's not going to be a danger. Okay. It's attached to the gizzard. Okay. All right, so what do I do from here then? Okay, you, want, you can turn it around and open up the butt end. Okay. And you can cut that parsley's nose off. Like the... 
Um, you want to tip it the other way around, so you got the butt down. Oh, okay. So flip it back. Over yep. Flip like it around. This. There you go. Okay. So right underneath the breastbone. Oh, I see it. Here, cut that piece of skin this way, right under the breastbone, so you don't cut it's into like right any here. of the innards. Yep. You got to cut it pretty deep, just not go all the way into the insides. Get through that membrane right there. That white membrane. Put a little. There you go. Now you can put your finger and thumb in there, and you should be able to rip it open. Okay. Because when you rip it, put your thumb in there and really poke through it. There you go. Now rip it. And there's all your insides. Okay. Now you take your hand, go all the way into the top where the neck is, kind of rotate it around, and just scoop everything okay, out. Okay, yeah, yeah, pull yeah. It, pull it out, and you should feel the heart, the I liver. I don't want to bust anything open. Yeah, I mean, as long as you don't bust the uh, gallbladder and the um, intestines, you should be fine. Okay. And those are usually pretty hard to bust. Okay. Unless you're squeezing it with your fingers or something. And the last thing we'll get out is the livers, uh, not livers, the lungs. And in case you have a hard time getting them out, I have spoons and little scrapers that we can get them out with too. <laughs> there you go, just pop it. Yep, pull it right out. So. Looks like you're doing really good. I hope so. Grab whatever it is and pull it. There you go. That's the crop right there that you've got. That oh, big right, sack. Yeah. Okay. Pinch it from the top, on the top, and pull it through. And that way nothing will come out in case there is something in it. Just pull it right through. Don't worry, you're not going to hurt the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just afraid of it busting. No, it's you, the the windpipe and the actual esophagus is empty. There's nothing in it. There okay, you go, you got you it. Go. All right, now make sure you scoop all that. And then you get the knife and cut all the way around the butt and cut the butt off with it. See where that intestine is? It's connected Same. to come out. Yeah. You're cut that whole thing out right there. Okay. That's just membrane, but you don't okay. want to pull on that. That is the okay. That is the guts. Okay. So you take your knife and cut a V shape from the left, from the right, and so, uh, okay. Now we're at okay, right here. And you cut it down this way, and then from the other side. There's this is just fat. You can leave this on there. This is okay. good stuff. Okay. So you so, said cut it like right yeah, here. Yeah, right there. Yep. Cut okay. a V shape down to the butt. You might want to go in deeper with your a little, knife. A little bit deeper. Gonna, okay. Yeah. Because you just watch your fingers. Don't yeah. cut your fingers. Yeah, go all the way in with a knife and just cut a big V in there. <laughs> I'm afraid. Of, do I go from outside or? Right here by the bone. Just cut right. Oh, so go in. Yeah, go oh, in all the okay. way. Just make sure you cut down. You can cut the Parsons nose off okay, too. I that way you don't saying. have a you don't have a chance of cutting through the intestines. If you cut straight down without yeah. even cutting a V, you'll just cut the whole Parsons nose off, and that way it'll work. I didn't even have my camera focused on you. It was like all over the place. <laughs> Actually, I think I, I think, I think you I'm got it. it right. Yeah. So I'm hitting bone now. Yeah. You can come in from the other side and do the same thing, and it should all come out. Okay. I hope I'm doing it right. I think you are. Right. Worst case scenario, something will spill, and we'll wash it off, and we still can save all that top stuff, since the only stuff on the bottom would be yucky, because everything else has already been cleaned. Okay. I think that's good. Okay, can you pull it all away from the chicken now? I think so. There you go. You can break that. There you go. There you go. Now, if you want to save any of that, and if not, I'll take it apart for you and your gizzard and your liver and your heart. That's the heart, right? Yeah, and that's the gallbladder. You don't want that. So which, this part? Oh, wait, no, sorry. There's the gallbladder. Okay, and then. I was wondering why the gallbladder was attached to the, to the heart. Okay. And this. That's the liver. You just grab and pull it. Okay, so separate. And just separate it by pulling it. Okay. There you go. You got the livers. And the gizzard you already got. And then you got... Oh, no, the heart's there. The gizzard's right there. That big floppy thing. That's attached to the crop. Oh, this thing right here, that, yeah. So that's the crop right there. You can just pull it off or cut it off. It's easier to cut it. You can see all that food coming out yeah. of the crop still. So there was something in there. Even though they didn't eat for a day, they still have something in there. And then that one, we'll skin that out. Cut like this. Yeah, you can just cut it right off. Okay. And we'll throw all the guts in that gut bucket down there. There we go. Nice. And your gizzard, we can skin that out, but I want to clean off the table. We'll probably get this one all, um, make sure we could pluck the feathers out and cut the wing tips off and the neck. We still got the windpipe in on this side. You want to take that yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it might. Make some noise. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, you should be able to grab it from down there. 
Oh, you know from the bottom? In this from hole. here. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put those in here. The heart has some... Did it fall off? What? Did I get the whole windpipe? Um... All right, so process. The killing cone set up here with the chickens in them, leading out into a bucket with water. And these cones are made out of a uh, one of those skip skid protectors for the carpet, but it kept sliding around, so it got cut up. So once they are done we actually cut the heads off then scald them and after that they go into the chicken plucker Got all them feathers down there doing nothing and this is heated water for shrink wrap and then we process them over here these are some of the ones we've already done they're up to seven and eight pounds right now they're ten weeks old we're going to save the feet. We obviously have to re-scald some of these because the skin didn't quite come off. Um, we don't use the tail, so it's just the whole thing comes off once we cut the vent out. I'll just cut the whole parson's nose off. We don't eat it anyway, but the cats will. Um, and then these are the parts we're saving. I've still got to do the gizzards on these because um, we have somebody in the family that loves gizzards, so I will clean those out for him. We've got the chicken livers, the hearts, and then these are some of the necks. Some of them have to still be cleaned up and I'll wing tips and stuff in there. We're gonna put carcasses in there for when we uh, get these chickens. Some of these are going to be, um, we're gonna take chicken breasts and thighs and drumlets and we're going to have chicken wings on some of these. The others, we're just gonna shrink wrap them whole. So I was just in the middle of cutting the feet off of this one. This one's got nice and clean feet because uh, the uh, scalding worked really well on this one. And what we've changed is, uh, instead of letting the chickens bleed out to death, we are just going to pull their heads through and cut them off because that's more humane. They're dead. I mean, that bleeding out, it's not my thing. Uh, it's just suffering while it's bleeding out, so this way we're done. We've still got some up here that need to be packaged up. They're going to be rinsed. Oh yeah, we do have a bucket of ice water here. We had a um, just water obviously it keeps freezing so that's what we rinse them out it's so cold today we don't need to have ice buckets out it is like in the 20s everything's freezing up on us even the pipes been freezing up our hose we've been warming it up to keep the water going well, that's good okay so this one's been obviously killed been scalded went through the chicken plucker we don't eat the Parsons nose so we don't care about that it actually comes off so you want to find the knuckle and don't cut all the way through it. You just, every time you slice it a little, it'll present itself. You get the tendon. Now you want to cut a little bit further back because you have the patella there. You can cut through this, but this will just damage your knife. So just go from behind and there you go. There's a foot. And we got another one. These make really good stews or chicken broth. Obviously, we're going to take the skin off a little bit more, scald them until the, the yellow skin comes off and the toenails before we even use them for eating. But So this is what you want to see. And you got your feet off and we'll just go ahead and I'll cut the neck a little shorter because we can use the neck for stews as well and chicken broth and I don't want such a long neck when we bag the chickens up so and again you can there you go cut it off now what you want to do is find the windpipe and the crop the crop should be empty since they've not been fed uh, for 24 hours we're on food restrictions so we don't have to deal with the gunk so you kind of make a little bit of a hole here. You can see the esophagus right there. It's going to pull through the other side. And there's the crop. And it is empty. You can see it's totally empty. So I'm just going to go ahead and shove that in. Just pull it out from the other side. Now I like to do my cuts a little bit lower. Not on the um, vent. But I don't like it too high because it pulls the skin away from the breast. And I don't mind the breast um, having skin on it. So cut a little slit in there the hole with my finger and then once you're in there don't use a knife for this you just pull it open and there's everything in there 
So we want to go in there. You kind of scoop around up to the shoulder blades and pull everything out this way. Um, now, should you by any chance cut the uh, the um, intestines, you really, if they're out here and you've cut them, you've saved this part of the chicken. You can, if you want to, get rid of the back end, unless you can just clean it off really quick. Now, what you find, the lungs are a little harder to get out because they're stuck to the back of the rib cage. And here comes the uh, here comes the um, crop. As you can see, it's empty. Crop's totally empty. Now the lungs are usually right here. So what I've done, another thing, there's a special tool that costs, I think, about 20 bucks. But you can use a melon baller, go in there and scrape the lungs out. There you go, right there. And if I want to scrape the other side out, just get a melon baller, scrape them out, just like you would on the melon. It comes right out. Now it's nice and clean in there. Now again, you've got all these guts out. You're going to have one string left, which is that goes out the vent. So you don't, everything else is out now, so you should be pretty safe. So what I just do, you can save the parson's nose. If you do eat the parson's nose, make sure you cut off this bump here. Because this bump has the wax the, that they preen themselves with. You don't want to eat that. That's like earwax. And you don't want to eat earwax. So here's what I'll do. We have this. There's obviously got some poop in there. And there's the vent. So we're just going to cut all the way around the vent. But for me, I'm just going to cut all the way around the parson's nose. So I'll cut it like a v-shape on this side into the parson's nose do the same thing on this side now if you should you cut the the guts right here not a big deal because you can just rinse the rest off and you're good to go because you've saved all this meat up here so then i'll just break this a little bit because there you go and then of course you can separate your gizzards now on your gizzards you will have a this is you're going to have to cut and they will be halved and you can skin them We'll go through that real quick as well. There's a lot of things attached to this thing, but mainly there's a lot of fat on it. You'll have the heart. Um, there, there is the, there's a heart. Grab the heart and pull that off. Might have some coagulated blood in there. I'll squeeze it out. And then, of course, the liver. Be very careful with the gallbladder. You're better off cutting a little bit around it and losing some of the liver rather than trying to pull it out or cutting it too close. Just get rid of that um, gallbladder. If that splashes, you don't want to eat the meat that it touched. So I'd rather sacrifice some of the liver. And then all this goes in the compost heap. We don't have pigs for them to eat it. Now I'll do one of these. I have plenty in there that need to be done. But when you get to the point where you have your gizzards, you can cut it right down the middle. And it's slippery. I normally have it on a board. But use a sharp knife. Don't cut yourself, of course. Cut down the middle, and you'll see this is full of their what they eat. This is where you find their grit. And of course, you don't want to eat this, but there is a lining that you take right here. It's the stomach lining. So once you get a hold of this, you just pull that right off, and you have your clean gizzard. And we just want to wash it, of course, because there is still going to be stuff. This one is tough. This one's really tough. Let me see if I can find another corner on this one to go. This one is super tough. Maybe I haven't cut it all the way. Let me cut it a little bit more on this side. There's the lining. There it goes. Basically, it's a it's the, the skin. Just pull that off, and all the yucky comes with it. Of course, you want to wash this, and then you have a nice clean gizzard. I'm going to do that to the rest, and this all needs to be washed. Now we have our chicken. Make sure the lungs are out. And you might find something else. I have, for instance, a little piece of esophagus in there. There it is. That's why I got pliers for it too, but I'm just gonna pull that out and push it through. There it is. There it is, got it. Throw that in the fill bucket. Now it's all cleaned up. Just make sure there's no uh, stuff on there you don't want. Feathers, and now what we have an ice pick there over here. And since it's really cold today, we didn't even put ice in it. It was just frozen water and plop. There they go until they cool down, which some of them are really cold already. A lot of these will obviously get cut up into chicken breasts, thighs, wings. And uh, we only keep a few whole chickens. We don't cook that many whole chickens, but we might sell some whole chickens. The ones we've packaged up, we have one here. Some of the ones... We haven't done such a good job of shrink wrapping them, but right now, 
our weights on our chickens is um, 8.7 pounds, and these are Cornish Cross, they're 10 weeks old. We've had them now on uh, boiler feed for 10 weeks. Uh, the reason we did 10 weeks, because at 8 weeks I wasn't ready. Um, 10 weeks, we now have a 3-day weekend, now this needs to have air out, but it's time to process them when they are big enough. And again, if you like chicken wings or chicken feet, I know a lot of people like to make broth with this. We are going to scald the skin off and the nails and then they make the broth. So we'll get on with plucking and processing. So you open it up and as you open it up, it will actually start the peel for you. See, as you pull it open, it peels away from the lining and you can just peel the uh, gizzard. Pretty much roll out the inside. That way you don't even have to try to look for the uh, edge. There you go. I'm only going to go ahead and dump this in. I'm just going to roll it all the way out and then I dump this into the uh, waste bowl. It goes in the compost. There's your gizzard cleaned up. Obviously you're still going to wash it. And it goes in the gizzard pile. I'll try that one more time. Just lay it on its side. Cut around it. Be careful not to cut yourself. Don't cut all the way through. There's the intake valve, and I usually cut that off. Then you will open it. I just just enough to expose a white line, and as you open it, you'll find that you might be able to just go ahead and grab the lining. Which there it is. The lining separated from the inside already, so you can just roll this out and that keeps everything separated. Instead of opening it all the way up and trying to find the edge, this makes it so much easier. Just roll that out. If you have a little bit left in there, pull it out. If not, you can always cut that off. Clean. See if we can do one more. Gizzard down. There's the vent. I always cut that piece off. Not necessary. Cut it from the side just like you would um, Actually, I don't know. <laughs> kind of cut around it. Just enough to where you nick the white right there. As you pull it open, you can see that the uh, lining is already peeling away. On the inside, you just basically roll the gizzard right off of there. The gizzard is clean. You've got everything bagged up. No mess. There you go. I'm still going to wash it. It has bits on the outside from the board. We also process the hearts. Now, as you can see, there's a membrane over this heart. Very easy to remove. It's just a, it's in a sack. Um, again, a lot of people will just eat this, and that's fine. I just cut it off because the chickens get it, push it out, and there's your heart. And there's the membrane and the top part, chicken feed, uh, cat feed. Same with this thing here. Squeeze it a little bit, you see that there's a top on that. Just cut that top off, squeeze it out. There it goes. Very simple to process these hearts. They will go in with the gizzards. There is a blood clot. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze that out. Cut the top off. quite a few chickens. This one was the second heaviest at 8.51. We had one at 8.7 and Jimmy's got that one. That's the one that was over scalded. Our smallest one was um, 6.8. was the smallest chicken we had and the most of them were 7, 7, 7, 7 point something over here. Actually this is the smallest one, 6.23. This was the smaller one. So we have two that were under seven pounds. Most of them were just over seven pounds and a couple of them were, were over eight pounds. Actually it was more than a couple. The other one was 8.07 and 8.04. So we had quite a few eight pounders in this one. So our freezer is getting full. We are done with processing. Got um, cut up chickens, chicken breasts, chicken wings. Got it all done. 
So today I'm going to finish cleaning up back there. I still have the uh, cones hanging. I need to get those cleaned out. It got a little late last night. It started getting dark. And since the weather is freezing, this will, uh, that will be fine. It's not going to smell or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and get these in the freezer. So we've got bone broth canning in the uh, pressure cooker. And then we also have bone broth in uh, a stock pot simply because uh, that big one didn't fit in the um, pressure cooker. And of course from the rest of it we've got chicken and dumplings tonight. We have dumplings in there and celery, onions, chicken, and very 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 fluffy dumplings with nutmeg, paprika, thyme, pepper salt, even with an egg. I like egg dumplings better. So there is our dinner for tonight. We are going to have some chicken and dumplings. I'm actually looking forward to it. I haven't eaten anything all day because I've been working on those chickens, getting them all packaged, cut up into portions and in the freezer. So they are all in the freezer. We've got a big bag of gizzards for Jimmy. Uh, and the hearts and the livers, I will try to make some uh, liver patty with. So I need to find that recipe for the liver patty. Pan. 